any of you watching, I recently went and saw Dune Part 2. Great movie if you haven't already seen it. Visually stunning, just action-packed. Definitely do recommend. Um, one of the parts that I thought would be cool to model up and print is the thumper that they use to call the sandworms. And this is my first attempt. It's a bit too big, as you can see. Um, and then I went and I made a few modifications along with reducing the size and I ended up here with a model that I'm pretty happy with. So let's take a look in Fusion 360 how to model this thing. I'm not going to go exactly step by step, but I am going to go over each feature and how we got to this final model. All right, so we've jumped into Fusion here. Here's the main body, so the top half and the bottom half of the thumper, which I modeled together in one part here as a couple components. I'm not super familiar with the component feature of Fusion 360 yet, so I'm sure a designer with more experience than me is going to find this topology a little bit ridiculous. But anyways, still learning. Uh, and then I also made the spike and the internal post as separate parts. Again, someone with more experience probably would have made everything all in one file here, but that just felt easier for me to just split them out the way that I did. And so if we start from the beginning here, the first thing I did was bring in a reference image of the thumper and I made it as straight 90 degrees. So I had to tilt it slightly so that it would line up with the origins. And then I made a sketch of the outline and then I revolved it to get the general shape. And then I extruded a cut to make one of those little indents along with the little pattern at the bottom here. And then I did a fillet just to get those rounded corners to match the picture and then did a circular pattern, which gives you them all the way around. Like in the movie. Followed by a cutout in the bottom here that I started off doing two little notches and I then did a circular pattern to make this a six notch. It just had more stability that way. It didn't quite sit in the extended position when I only had the two tabs sticking out. And so now I made a new component here, which was the bottom half. And that was the end of the top half. The top half was pretty straightforward. So I did a similar thing down here where I made a sketch of the outline of the bottom half and then revolved it and then made a plane so I can make another sketch and I cut, cut extrude up into the body to make those little relief cuts that you see. And I patterned that also in a circular pattern followed by a revolve for those little ribs on the bottom and then a linear pattern to get all six of them. And then I did an extrude cut into the side here. This was a bit lazy. I'm actually off axis, so there's a bit of an angle to it, but the end product still looks pretty decent. I did this because in the reference image, the slot here is actually off axis from this cutout. So I could have had these lined up and perfectly straight on to the axis, but I just went a slightly off axis for this one. And then I did a pattern, which puts them all the way around. Did another revolve down here just because the shape, I didn't love it and I didn't want to break anything by modifying the original sketch. So I just added a little bit of a, a straight taper at the bottom here instead of what I had before. Added some fillets just to make things look a little bit smoother. Again, up here, some just tiny fillets. And now I added the threads. So I made a hole. Here was a hole. And then I added threads at the bottom and at the top. So what I did with this hole here is I actually went 37.5, where the ID of these threads is 37. 
uh, just to allow some clearance. So I'm using one of the standard threads from the thread tool, which is like a 40 by three millimeters, if I remember correctly. And in order to get the clearance between two 3D printed parts, I just shaved off 0.5 from the, di the diameter here. And then finally you have that, that chamfer again. So if we go over to the post, so I need one internal post for the top half to slide up and down on which is this internal post here. And this is a pretty straightforward part. We start from a circular sketch that becomes a cylinder. And then I do the threads on the bottom. And then I make another sketch, which is just shaving off the outside. So I did the opposite here. I think the OD was, or the outer diameter was 40 millimeters um, spot on. And I went to down to 39 or something along those lines. We can check here. Yeah, so I went down to 39 in here just to shave a little bit off. Again, to give the clearance between those two parts. Bit of a lazy, hacky way to do it, but it worked. So now I did a offset extrude. So I drew the the shape I wanted on this plane here and then offset down to here, which is 20 millimeters offset uh, just to give those little wings. And then I gave it, I gave it a chamfer on the bottom here so that I could print it without having supports come all the way from the build plate up to those little tabs. I could just print it without supports and they would be fine. And then we go and give it a little fillet around the corners along with a chamfer at the top. And then I did a circular pattern to make those go all the way around. So that's the internal post. And that allows for the top half to have a static position where it's all the way down or all the way up. If you just pull it all the way up and then turn it by about 15 degrees, um, it will stay at the top position. And then you got the external post, which or the spike that goes into the ground. And this one's also not a crazy part. So we just start with a cylinder that I added the threads to. I actually copied the internal post because I knew the threads were the same at the top and the bottom. So that's what I started from. And so basically I was able to reuse that same geometry and then just remove it. I think I just did a cut to cut. Yeah, I cut it all the way down. So that's pretty lazy too, but it saves time. And then I add a little platform because I knew this was going to be wider. And then I sketched the first half of the spike. And then I did a pattern to make the two. And then I felt like it was lacking something. So I just added another little, little piece at the bottom here. And that also made it a little more structurally sound for when you want to screw it in you have somewhere to actually twist it in or else if you twist with the fins you're you have a good chance of snapping these off because they're pretty thin but i don't want to make them any thicker because they look kind of weird once you start making them thicker that was the entire design process now we're in bamboo studio and the last thing that i did is when i imported it here i scaled everything down to 80 percent because i didn't like the way 100 percent looked it was pretty gigantic and so 80% was the sweet spot, I think. Yeah, 256 grams and seven hours total of print time. So I sent this over to the X1 Carbon that's in my garage and got that all printed out. And here's the final result. So we end up with this four part design where the bottom half has the internal post that just threads in as far as you can take it. And then if you want this to be stable on your desk, you could just leave it like that and just add the top half. And if you want it to stay in the top position, just bring it up and rotate it slightly and it'll stay in that top position. And you just slide it, rotate it a little bit and it'll slide down. And then again, if you want to maybe spike this in the ground outside, you would just thread in the bottom part too. Um, be careful with this. If you try and grip it by the fins and twist, you have a good possibility of snapping the fins, but if you just stay closer to the base where there's that extra bit of material, 
that goes in pretty good like that. And so now you have your own thumper. I'll put a link to the model in the description. Maybe you'll want to print your own. Let me know how that goes. And here's a clip of the behind the scenes for filming that initial clip at the beginning of this video. I hope you like this one and I'll see you in the next one.